That's pretty well straightforward. That's the kind of stuff you put in a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. Paragraph 11 and 12. Zip codes and postal codes are in martial law jurisdiction. You'll notice that pursuant to Title 18, United States Code, Section 1342, my proper name is Glenn Winningham, House of Fern, and my proper mailing address is, and it's and it has and with zip code and exempt at the bottom, and then it says unless you want to be guilty of mail fraud, it shall be shown exactly like it. I kind of get belligerent, you know. <laughs> I like it. So uh, anyways, that's what that's all about. Postal codes and zip codes are martial law. Do you live in a martial law jurisdiction? No, I don't. And uh, uh, Title 18, Section 1342. Now, again, part of this, and it's up to you whether you want to use it or not, but one of the things that I include is this SEC website that says that Canada is a municipal corporation domiciled in the District of Columbia. That means that Canada is subject to the United States Code. And that means that that uh, Section Title 18, United States Code, Section 1342, that makes it a felony to send mail to a fictitious mailing address applies. Or improper. Paragraphs 13 to 15 uh, basically says that uh, I'm not interested in being a surety. Matter of fact, 13, um, 13. it says, uh, you notice that it's my intent never to act as surety or in any way a guarantor or accommodation party for fictitious entities created by government officials through fraud, coercion, intimidation, and perjury vote. You'd notice that I'm not a second-class U.S. citizen, corporation, or other fictitious entity. No driver's license. Driver's license is color of law, even in Canada. It's all color of law. No authority to require one. You do not have a driver's license, even though your straw man might have one. Uh, you'll notice that according to the courts, there's no such thing as a driver's license under Texas law. That's what I use. Uh, but I, what I would do if in Canada, I'd just tell them that it's all color law. You have no authority to require a driver's license. And, uh, and uh, you know, that's what I'd say. Anyways, uh, paragraph 16. So then you're going to fight that ticket they're going to give you because you're driving on a license. Well, you got to be prepared actually Actually, if you got them noticed beforehand, chances are they won't stop you. But, um, uh, you know, you have to bear, again, what you do is, is you serve a notice, right? And, and you serve a notice on the Attorney General, and you find out, you can go down to the local cop shop, right? You go to the local RCMP or like the City of Edmonton, yep. okay? Well, actually, on the City of Edmonton's website, you can find out who the Chief of Police are, the Police Commissioner, and, and um, I'll, I, I can just about guarantee you, look at the chief of police, he even sent me that letter back saying, saying, we got your letter, and that's fine, we can go for that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, so um, there's, there's people that drive around without a driver's license. <coughs> if, if, if you're concerned about that, now, where you guys live, you're out in RCMP territory, mm -hmm. and you go to the local, you find out where the local RCMP are at, you go down to the local office, you take a couple, three witnesses with you, and you serve it on the guy that's running the show. You say, who's running the show down here? And and, and they'll say, oh, that's Sergeant so-and-so. Is he here? Yeah, he is. He's over in that office right there. You just, can we go talk to him? And you just go over and talk to him. And you say, here, we want to serve you with this. And you serve it with him. And you've been served. Have a nice day. And uh, and then you go on your business, about your business. He knows exactly what you're doing. Well, she does. It's Sergeant Carol Spears. <laughs> a better business card right there. There you go. <laughs> So anyways, and, and you serve it with this, so you've been served, and, and have a nice day. Be nice, there's no reason to be nasty about it, because they actually perform a valuable service, hunt yeah. down murderers, thieves, those kinds of people. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, you might even want to mention that we don't want you to take any of this personal, that we appreciate the work you do, but we're trying to uh, assert our rights, and so we're serving this on you, and have a real nice day. That's what I'd say. She's and not going to file that in 13? Absolutely not. No? She knows what you're doing, I guarantee you. 
Matter of fact, who was it? <coughs> Robert was telling me today that his dad used to be a police officer, and they used to sit around the table <coughs> building cases against people, and he never realized that he'd ever be doing that to other people and to them. <laughs> And, and, and he sees what this is all about. He says it's 100%. That's what it is. You're building a case against them. And, but if you, if you never have to proceed, <coughs> see what I'm saying? If they honor their oath of office, mm -hmm. then, then you will have essentially wasted your time. But I'd rather waste my time putting them in a position where they have to honor their oath of office. Exactly. See, see what I'm saying? Yep. So anyways, that's what you have to do. You never know. You know, this one might be honest. They might be good. They might not ever violate your rights anyways. But the other guy over here, see, you have to administrate them all. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if, if uh, you have to be prepared. Now then also, you can find out another thing is you go to your local police guy, okay? Like you guys are out by Edson, right? Yeah. So you find out where the local police officer is, and, and then you, and you talk to him and you say, so who's the, who's the crown prosecutor around here? They'll tell you. They'll tell you. How do I find him? Where's he located? They'll tell you. Yep. And then you go down to where he's located and you serve him with one too. Yep. You see what I'm saying? I guarantee you that even if this cop leaves and another one cop comes in and it goes to that prosecutor, he's not going to want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. That's right. yeah, you're right. And then, then what you do is who's the local judge around here? Now where do I find him? Then the mayor. You can serve the mayor, but the judge is really the guy that's going to do it. And and uh, I wouldn't, you know, let's face it, you can serve a lot of people. And uh, um, the mayor, I mean, he's like the CEO, and really, he really never does anything. It's the guys that violate your rights are the, the police chief, okay, or the, the, the whoever's in charge of the RCMP, and and the prosecutor, okay, he's, he's a big one, okay, because if he doesn't want to do it, it ain't going nowhere. I don't care what the police want to do. If the prosecutor won't do it, it ain't going nowhere. And and the judge. Yeah. Because the prosecutor and the judge are sitting back getting a royalty from the whole thing, too. Yeah. And so those are the two that you really need to go after. And and the chief of police, because he's running the police department, you know. And and they could all be honorable. They could all never violate your rights. But you never know. And the guys over here, maybe they're gonna, maybe they're not. And so you gotta do them all. And and then and what that does is that helps everybody. And there's not that many of them, you know. Um, what I do when I was in the states and I was doing it, I mean, I, I just did the, the Edmonton, Calgary, and Lethbridge because they have their own police departments, and then the, and then the RCMP deputy commissioner because there's no way on the internet that you can get any information about any of the local offices, and and, and essentially the only way you can get it is to go down there and talk to them. But they'll talk to you. Yeah. They'll be happy to give it to you. And then after you get all the information, then then you go home, you make up the documents, you serve it on them, and, you, and, then, and then I would, especially the cops, you know, the prosecutors, I, I have pretty well much contempt for them, but, uh, but the cops, you know, they do perform a valuable function, and, and they hunt down murderers and thieves and those kinds of people, and so I tell them, look, you know, I don't want you to take this personal, I mean, I'm just trying to assert my rights, and, and I want you to know that I appreciate the work you do. And I don't know how much they pay you, but my opinion is not enough. That, that's what I tell them. And, and, you know, you don't need to make them into your enemy, but, but uh, you need to let them know on certain terms that you intend to assert your rights. And once they understand that, chances are they'll see you coming and they'll turn the other direction and run an eye. I, I've seen that happen more than you can imagine. <laughs> Picture identification. Um, you can make up your own picture identification. Um, that's actually some of these paragraphs are not going to be the same, but uh, but that's the picture ID that you got. Okay, it's in my pile here. Um, that's what I did. Um, land titles has a miscellaneous category. I know they do. Um, right now, we haven't administrated them enough, and so chances are they won't let you record it there. Um, but uh, if, if we go down there, we got to go down there, and we got to build a case against them, and file some criminal complaints, and, and, and get them under control. And uh, chances are uh, it won't be long, and they'll start, you know, they'll let you record whatever you want. That's really what they should be doing. Now, you got to understand that it's a felony for a government official to condemn government records, right? 
I don't know how much you guys are familiar with that. If, if you look it up in the criminal code, I can guarantee you it's in there. I know it's in every state now in the U.S. It's a felony for a government official to condemn government records. And um, when you hand your records to the county recorder of the land titles for recording, well now it's a government record. Once they have it in their hands, it's now a government record. And, uh, and they have to record it. Uh, but what they'll do is they'll look at it and they'll say, well, you know, I don't know if I should be recording this, and give it back to you. And uh, so you go down there with some witnesses, and that's what it's called. They're condemning a government record. Oh, let's see if it's in the criminal code here. Yeah, they can get 14 years. Isn't that what? That's possible. I don't know. That's 337. Is that 337? So there we go. Okay. It's a felony to con condemn government records, and that's what they're doing. If you give it to them, it's now a government record. They have to file it. All they're supposed to do is just file it. What if you and, email? Huh? What if you email? Well, you don't really have proof of service. You need to do it until we get them trained. Right now, they're going to ignore it. Okay? <coughs> They'll just trash it. You know? That must have been junk email. That must have gone into my junk email box. You know? I mean, that's easy to say. But they responded. Huh? They responded back. Oh, they did? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, you got proof yeah. now. Yeah? But who? is? Was it anybody in particular? Deputy uh, Registrar. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> so file a criminal complaint. That's that's good. Yeah, I was coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the part of the problem is, is that all all the registries are, are privatized. Well, I don't care. Yeah. They still have an oath of office. They're under uh, under um, Minister for Service Alberta, uh -huh. right? And they're also under a federal minister they because they're they're they're. Uh, um, land titles is federal. <coughs> it is? I thought it was. At least I was talking to a lawyer here recently and he said it was. Interesting. So, you know, I know it's under the Minister for Service, provincially. And I don't know how the relationship works back and forth. Um, but, uh, uh, but this lawyer, I sold a house here in Glenwood recently and he wanted to spell my name and this lawyer wanted to spell my name in all block capital letters. And uh, he said the feds require it. And because I told him that name's copyrighted. <coughs> so, um, anyways. Uh, but the bottom line is, is it's still a felony. Okay, it's a major offense for them to condemn government records. And, uh, and, and that's what they're doing. Okay, when you give it to them and they refuse to file it. And don't, you know, people have trouble because they go down to some magistrate and want to file a criminal complaint with the magistrate. Screw the magistrate. Make up your criminal complaint, send it to the Attorney General by registered mail or serve it on them and with some, with some witnesses. And then, when, when, if the Attorney General doesn't do nothing, then you serve it on, uh, on the, uh, the Premier and the Governor General. You see what I'm saying? By registered mail or with witnesses. And, and then, you know, you just go up the chain of command. You know, I'm not going to waste my time with some crook on the bench. And, and, uh, and yeah, I'll tell you, you, everybody and our brother knows, and I guarantee you, I hate to say some things, you know, because there's a mixed company here. Manure rolls downhill, let me put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, I guarantee you, you, you invite everybody you can to the party, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but they need to be trained. They obviously need to be trained, you know? But, but it's because we're asleep at the wheel. It's our own fault. Wake up, wake up, you're asleep at the wheel. <laughs> Paragraph 18 is talking about persons, and it says that I'm not a person. And uh, there's court cases that talks about it. These are U.S. court cases. Um, but there's there's all sorts of research that people have done on, on, on person. Matter of fact, who was telling me that somebody did a whole seminar on person? Somebody recently was telling me about David that. David Lindsay. David. Who? David Lindsay. I don't think it was David Lindsay. But, uh, but there's, there's, there's a lot of people that have done a lot of work on person. I've got some, some memorandums of law on person. It's a person's a corporation, and, uh, and I'm not a person. And uh, so, anyways. Um, a motor vehicle. Motor vehicle's commercial. Now, I know in Alberta, codes, 
think it's the Traffic Safety Act. Yep. It says a motor vehicle is every contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power. Okay. But you got to understand that that's Province of Alberta in all block capital letters. Okay. Which is a subcorporation of Canada in all block capital letters, which is domicile in the District of Columbia. Okay. So in that jurisdiction, it is. But District of Columbia, Title 18, United States Code also says that it has to be in commerce. So there's there's enough other stuff in the Alberta Traffic Safety Act that's completely colorable. Like for example, and I'm actually going to come into some of that stuff. I, I just can't remember if it's in this one. It'll probably be in this one or the next one, where I go into some of the definitions in there and we talk about that stuff. Hey, Glenn, do you yes. want to do you want to get into the question and answer thing now? That's fine. You, do you want to? I guess uh, what time we got to be done at, at eleven well, o'clock? Eleven, but usually we stop about fifteen minutes. Okay. You. Yeah, why don't we go ahead? I'll just remember we're here uh, for next week. And we'll continue on from here. Uh, does anybody have any questions about this stuff at all? I mean, we've been getting some questions already anyway. Have you been writing any questions down? <coughs> yes. Now, when you uh, file stuff into court, is that considered then a judgment <coughs> document? Huh? When you file things into court for a court case, is that considered a um, government document? Oh. Yeah, they'll put stamps on stuff. They see this file. So that's a government that's filed, and so they have to look at that. They have to include that then mm -hmm. in court case. But you have to have to um, like an affidavit or something like that. I mean, they won't just accept an affidavit. You can't just give them an affidavit and expect them to file it into a case. Okay, with an affidavit, you have to attach it to a motion or something like that, or you can attach it to an original lawsuit or something like that. But when they actually stamp it filed, now it's government document. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And the court stamps it. Yeah. How do we come uh, become part of Texas like you? <laughs> so I can tell them I, uh, I'm from Texas and we don't have no driver's license. <laughs> well, you could you could go ahead and tell them that anyways. You could uh, get a mailbox down there and give them a Texas address and uh, you know that's all I do. That's it. You just get a box number well, down I there. I live down there for a period of time, and so uh, but all it is is a box down there. Well, how do you get your mail? Do you go all the way down to Texas to get your mail? I call them up and tell them, send my mail to this address here in Canada. And they put it in a separate envelope and ship it up here. There you go. Glenn? Yes. Is there, is there any, uh, uh, I don't know what the right word is. Should we, should we fear our pensions that we've had locked away for our careers? Should we fear losing any of that stuff? Or how do we protect that stuff? That's in the matrix, okay? So um, can we can we sit on a fence and actually access that when we're older? Yeah, you can, but... Because I hear you say you are still got your driver's license, but you say you don't have one when they ask I you. don't plan on collecting anything, oh. as far as that's concerned. Um, as a matter of fact, I, 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 even, I know there's money in there. I doubt that I would ever, ever... I'd have to be living in a cardboard box before I'd ever access any of that stuff. Um, uh, quite frankly, I, I have no intentions of ever accessing that because, because you're you're basically you're going to the government for something again, you know. Even if it's it's your straw man. That's no, I don't, mean, to I don't mean the government pensions. I mean our corporate pensions that we worked all our life through. Yeah, but still, even that, it's all in the matrix. Yeah, it's all in the matrix. Well, why can't the corporation accept it? Though? If it's a corporate pension, it's not near as bad as the matrix. Yeah. And uh, and so, uh, but you got to understand. That that's probably tied to a social insurance number. I would never, I mean, don't ever take on Revenue Canada because I'll tell you, they'll seize it. Oh, I've already Guaranteed. got Revenue Canada beating at my door. Well, that's uh, what we have solu some solutions that's, for Revenue Canada. Well, that's fine. Yeah, but you have to go into commerce to do that. Yeah. Okay, you can't do that <coughs> with my procedures. Up, and mine is just strictly common law, okay? Mine is saying I'm the king and you have no authority over me. If you go and you say I'm the king and you have no authority over me, but yet, you're you're feeding at the trough, you know they'll they'll see the du du the dual standard, okay, and they'll ignore your I'm the king and you're having no authority over me. They'll ignore that number one, and then you'll get them all mad, and then they'll really go after you. You see what I'm saying? And I've seen that more times than you can imagine. So so you can't, you know, um, if 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 you're you know, with the pension, as far as that's concerned, I know too many people that they've seized the whole thing. It's all gone. 
Military pensions, all sorts of stuff. I've walked away from more money already than what they're able to seize. Uh -huh. So I really don't have anything more to worry about then. Okay. Well, and this is, and make sure your bases are covered. That's all I'd say. You know, you need to cover your bases before you, you know, you take, you take the bull by the horns. If you're not careful, the bull's going to gore you. Well, I've warded them off for over 14, 15 years. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. But they're still, they're still sending me an offer for thousands yeah. of dollars. Well, if, 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 it's, if you've dealt with it for that long and that's all it's ever been, then chances are it's working. You know what I mean? They haven't escalated it. Yeah. Um, so chances are it's working. What I think they but do is put my file on a trainee's desk and see what he can do with my file. <laughs> you never know. I've that over the years. You might. You might. But I've uh, actually spoken to them on the phone and taught them how to do their job. Over somebody who needs to be, somebody who's be lacking a bonus. They're getting bonuses. <laughs> they they get royalties. Yeah, they, they get royalties on that yeah, stuff for I'm sure. Them. They get a commission on the money they collect. Sure. Yeah, they definitely get commissions and stuff on the money they collect. Um, you have to. Uh, the only thing is, is I, I would say that, uh, like this, this stuff here. I mean, this will work with the city police. You know, with with stuff going on in Alberta, it'll work great. But but Revenue Canada. Um, I wouldn't say it'll work with them. I mean, you can go ahead and do it, but they'll steamroll over you just as fast as you'll steamroll over them. And and as long as you've got your stuff hidden and to where there's nothing they can touch, um, then you might get away with it. And, and you know, you file criminal complaints against them and, and you'll hurt them, you know, uh, more than they'll hurt you probably, but they'll completely ignore it. I, I can just about guarantee you. I know in the States, that's what they'll do. I mean, they completely ignore it. And, uh, and you know, like let's face it, as sovereigns, you know, we can go into international commerce, you know, and that's that's essentially the way they look at it. In my opinion, is is they look at it like you want to go into international commerce, and uh, you know, they'll go ahead and criminally convert your name, and and all the rest of it. But uh, but I've got it now myself that the, the IRS doesn't want to communicate with me. Um, but that's that's a very difficult thing to do. I just never sent them an invoice. I've always threatened to. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Well, I sent them invoices and I filed a commercial lien against them, even criminal complaints and all sorts of stuff. And uh, but but you know I wouldn't recommend that to anybody because um, it's it's all very abstract, you know. And and you know there's there's first of all I never read their junk mail they send me. Um, I just my attitude is is it's copyright violations and all that. And, and so I'd send them back an invoice. And then what I'd do is I'd send a, send a, send a copy of the invoice to like George Bush and with a notice of demand, you know what I mean? To, to rein in as hired thugs and, and criminal complaints and, and all the rest of it. But, you know, I mean, I was suing them at the same time and that didn't stop them, you know? I was in the Court of Appeals and it ultimately went to the Supreme Court and, and that didn't stop them, you know, until what happened is I moved, you know? And, uh, you know, then, then they didn't communicate with me anymore. And that was about the time that I won my, or that my Supreme Court case, you know, I, I think I won it. I mean, the, the Department of So-Called Justice waived their right to respond, which is an admission that everything, you know, of, of all the allegations. And um, so, um, but it wasn't a, a, a ruling in my favor, you know, some sort of landmark decision or anything like that. And, uh, and so, you know. Yeah. Commercial lien. Um, so that's international. So you're not, when you're sovereign, you're not uh, acting in the in system or the matrix. So you're still outside of it? Or you are in commerce at that point, which is part of the matrix, isn't it? Yes. Um, the uh, technically, okay. It's private international law, okay? Private being the operative word. What? I can answer uh, that question. The commercial lien <coughs> comes from the common law of contracts. Well, that's which, which that's which, all. So which is mixed in also with the, the that's, maritime that's, admiralty. I, that's true. I mean, uh, commercial lien, but it's but it's definitely commercial, and and you're using their. Um, um, but it is it is you're putting them on notice. It, it is actually it is quite common law, but it's private. But it's completely private, okay. and 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 uh, and it's still commercial because it's called a commercial lien. Um, what what uh, 
what uh, um, see it's it's private international law is what it's called okay private uh, and, and as contradistinction to public okay uh, public law is like treaties and stuff like that in, in international law and then there's also a, a international common law okay and and so private is is basically contracts between individuals you know what I mean or or it could be contracts between nations and as a sovereign I mean we can be a nation okay if there's an, a book called uh, the law of nations that was written by uh, who was it written by anyways it was written in the mid 1700s and uh, and uh, it's called the law of nations and there's three things that are required to make up a nation and uh, first you need people well one of the people right here Okay, and, uh, and you need